God our Father, from the Lord Jesus, your friends. Can you imagine, as you were leaving church today, if you were asked to go out on a two or three week mission trip around the state of Wisconsin, you could choose somebody to take as a partner with you, but you were told not to bring much else along, leave your wallet behind, don't pack any food, don't take any extra clothes with you. You're not going to be coming back home in the evenings, but don't worry about making arrangements for somewhere else to stay. Just go out and share the gospel with people and trust that some of them will invite you in and provide you with the things that you need during the next couple of weeks. Would you be ready to go? I'm not sure that I would be. Part of God's word that we give our attention today comes from Mark chapter 6. We want to take note of what Jesus says to his disciples. Since these are the words and works of our Savior in the gospel, I invite you to please stand for our reading. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. So you heard the instructions Jesus gave. And how do his disciples respond? They went out, taking nothing except a staff. But actually, they had a little more with them than that. They had their trust in the Lord's care. They had their trust in the Lord's word. Jesus has not sent us on the same kind of journey that he sent these first disciples. But we have been sent to our friends and family, to our neighbors and co-workers, to this community. And we may not have a staff to take with us, but we have that very same trust in the Lord's care, that very same trust in the Lord's word. And so just as these first disciples went out, so will we. They went and we go, trusting in the Lord's care. Trusting in the Lord's care begins by understanding the many blessings that come from being sent by God. Being sent by God, first of all, gives us confidence because it tells us that He stands behind us as we go about the work that He's placed before us. Jesus gave these first disciples the authority to drive out evil spirits. He was telling them that since I am sending you out to do this work, my power is going to stand behind you as you go. The fact is, God has entrusted to all of his people an even greater authority than that. Jesus has entrusted the very keys to the kingdom of heaven into the hands of every single one of his people. In John chapter 20, Jesus says, If you forgive anyone their sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Can there be any greater authority than that? It's clear that Jesus stands behind us as we go about the work that he sends us to do. 
Another great blessing of being sent by God is that it quiets the objections that our own sinful nature often raises when it comes to doing this work. It takes, the que- takes away the question of whether we should or should not share our faith with other people. We've been sent. This is our purpose in life. The Lord has placed us where we are and with the people among whom we live for this very reason that we might share his love with them. So being sent by the Lord speaks to us when we get lazy. It strengthens us when we grow tired. It confronts us when we are unwilling. And it encourages us when we're timid. As weak, sinful people, we need to be sent. And we can rejoice in knowing that we are. And when the Lord sends us, we have to understand that this is a command that he gives, not a request. It says, go and preach the good news to all creation. Or as we heard last week, you must speak my word. It's a command. But at the same time, we recognize that it is a great privilege. To be sent by the Lord reminds us that we are his people that our sins have been forgiven, that we have been selected by God himself for service in his kingdom. The more we appreciate all that God has done for us and given to us personally, the more we are inspired and motivated to go out and share that message with others. Because we understand that the greatest blessing of being sent comes not to the one who is sent, but to the ones that we are sent to. God doesn't send us out to share his word in this world just to give us busy work to do until he takes us home to heaven. He sends us for the sake of the lost. He sends us because of his desire that all people be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Being sent by the Lord shows us just how much He cares for our souls personally, and it shows us just how much He wants to care for the souls of many others. Because we are sent by the Lord, we can also trust that the Lord will take care of us as we go. You know, Jesus told His first disciples, take nothing except the staff, no bag, no bread, No money, no extra clothes, just a good set of shoes. His point in giving those instructions was to teach his disciples that they could count on him to take care of them. And of course, Jesus did that very thing. And he did it through the people that they were sent to share the gospel with. The Apostle Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians 9. He says, those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. This is still the way that God provides for the physical needs of his full-time gospel ministers. And he provides an abundance through these means. But those who are not in the full-time public ministry can also expect that the Lord will care for them too. That protection and provision that extended over Jesus' disciples as he sent them out, that extends over all of God's people as we carry out the work that he's given us to do, as we invite that neighbor to church, as we share our faith with a co-worker, as we reach out to a family member who's strained. The fact is, the Lord promises to care for us as we serve him in any number of ways, as we joyfully bring our generous gifts in support of the gospel ministry, he promises that we're going to have what we need for ourselves and for our families. As we give of our time to serve the Lord in whatever way, he promises that that time we spend is not going to be forfeited or wasted, but truly blessed and worthwhile. 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says, you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain, ever. In whatever ways 
God may use us to serve him and to serve other people. His sending of us always comes with the promise that he will care for us right now and that he will care for us for all eternity. Listen to these words from Jesus. Everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. Jesus made sure of that at the cross. We can trust the Lord's care. And you know, one more thing about the Lord's care here that we don't want to miss. You notice how Jesus sent his disciples out two by two. That's pretty wise, wasn't it? I mean, not only do two witnesses add validity to the message that you're sharing, but it also meant that these two could encourage one another when times were tough. For the same reason that God brings us together as members of a congregation. I know that some of you came alone here today. But as you look around, you understand that you're not alone. You're surrounded by a congregation of brothers and sisters who are ready to stand by you and go with you as you serve the Lord. Trusting in the Lord's care, they went. And we go. But it wasn't just the Lord's care that they trusted in. It was also the Lord's word. You notice that Jesus didn't tell his disciples to go out and convince people to become followers. He didn't tell them to go out and change people's hearts or to bring them to faith. We know that those things are above our pay grade. Jesus makes that very clear. In fact, he tells his disciples, when you go to these places, if they don't welcome you or if they don't listen to you, move on. Shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them, as if to say, we were here with the life-giving word of God, but for the time being, you are rejecting that. Jesus didn't tell them to stay and argue until the cows came home. To think that by sound logic or clever reason, they could overcome these people's unbelief. It doesn't work that way. The disciples simply had to trust that the word that they were called to share, whether it was received or rejected, still powerful and would still accomplish the purpose for which God sent it. All that Mark really tells us about this mission trip is that they went out and they preached that people should repent. It's kind of a simple way of saying that the disciples went out and they preached the law and the gospel to people. Because we know that repentance has two parts. On the one hand, there is that sorrow over sin that the Holy Spirit works in our hearts as he convicts us of our sin in thought, word, and deed through the law. And on the other hand, there is that faith in Jesus that the Holy Spirit also works in our hearts through the gospel. Through the good news that God has provided a Savior for our sin. It's that powerful message, that message of sin and grace, of law and gospel, that worked faith in our hearts. And it's that same powerful message that will work faith in the hearts of others. It will bring results. And these disciples, they got to see some of these results. I mean, we're told that they drove out evil spirits that... Many who were sick were healed. I'm certain they heard some beautiful confessions of faith as they went about their work. They certainly saw wonderful fruits of faith as the people they shared the word with provided for the things that they needed during that time. But I'm also certain that there were many results that went unseen by the disciples. Times when they planted that seed only to have it spring up later on. Still, they didn't get discouraged. They knew what their task was. To go and share the word as much as possible and to trust that it would work. And you know, that's just exactly what God wants from us as well. Since we know that it is the word alone that works change in people's hearts and lives, then as God's people who are sent to share that word, 
We want to know it as best we can. We can't share what we don't have. All of God's messengers have to understand that the first person on whom this powerful word must do its work is us. The more we search the scriptures, the more we learn of God's beautiful plan of salvation, well, the more ready and confident we will be to share it with others. The more we treasure the forgiveness that Jesus won for us and the promise of eternal life that he's given to us, the more passionate we will be in sharing it with others. Since we know that it is the word alone that brings change in people's hearts and lives, well, we're going to be as persistent as possible with that word. We want to do all we can to keep people connected to it, to keep on inviting, to keep on sharing it. Now, we know we can't make plans for how many people are going to come to faith through our witnessing. But as individuals, we can make a plan how many people we're going to invite. As a congregation, we can make a plan how many opportunities are we going to give people to hear the word here at Bethany. And since we know the power of God's word the way that we do, we should be always optimistic that as we share it, there will be results. And sometimes we see them too. When that neighbor we invited joins us at church, when that coworker asks us to learn a little more about what makes us tick as a believer in Jesus, but like those first disciples, there's going to be plenty of times too when we don't see the results. But still, we can be sure that they will be there because we're sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus. The Apostle Paul says in the book of Romans that the gospel is the power of God for salvation. The letter to the Hebrews calls the gospel a living and active word, sharper than any two-edged sword. Through the prophet Isaiah, God tells us that that gospel that goes out to the world will not return empty. Period. Trusting in the Lord's word, those first disciples went out. So will we. But you don't have to leave your wallet here today. You can go out for lunch after church. Plan on sleeping in your own bed tonight, changing into some fresh clothes tomorrow. Again, Jesus has not sent us in the same way that he sent these first disciples. But again, we have been sent. Family and friends, the neighbors and co-workers to this community. Wouldn't it be great if somebody were writing about the work that we do as a congregation and they said the very same thing about us that was said about these first disciples? That trusting in the Lord's care and trusting in the Lord's word, those people at Bethany, they went out and preached that people should repent. They told people the truth about the problem of sin. More than that, they told people the truth about the Savior that God sent in Jesus. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.